Welcome to this worked example on continuous random variables. So this question says a continuous random variable x has a PDF defined by, and the PDF is written out here. Okay, and we're also told that the expectation of x is one half, okay? And we need to, in part a, find the constants a and b. So we have these unknowns here in the, um, in the PDF. So we need to solve for them. Um, in part B, we need to find the CDF of X. And in part C, we need to find the variance. Okay? So let's get started with part A. Okay, so for part A, we need to find A and B, right? Which are these unknowns inside the PDF. So to find two unknowns, we're going to need two distinct equations involving A and B. And to get those two equations, we're going to need two pieces of information um, about the distribution, okay? Which we can then derive equations involving A and B. So one of those pieces of information can be that we know the expectation of X is one half, okay? Because we're, we're told that in the question. And we can get the other piece of information by recalling that we know that for a PDF to be valid, we need that the property that when you integrate the PDF over the range of x, okay, with respect to x, this must integrate to 1, okay? And this is like the equivalent of saying in the discrete case that the probabilities for each value of x need to sum to 1, okay? So this is like the equivalent in the continuous case, okay? So let's do that. So we have two things which we can use to find information on A and B. So let's start with the second one, which is the property. So we know in this case, if we integrate between 0 and 1, here 0 and 1 is the range of x. So those are going to be our limits. Okay. And then if we integrate the PDF, which in this case is ax squared plus bx, okay, with respect to dx, this must equal 1 for the PDF to be valid, okay? So let's um, actually solve the integral. So this implies that we get a over 3 x cubed plus b over 2 x squared evaluated between 1 and 0, and this equals 1, which when you substitute in the values, you just get that a over 3 plus b over 2 equals 1, okay? So that's one equation involving a and b. And then to get the second equation, we'll just use that the, the expectation is 1 half. So let's do a similar thing. So generally speaking, we know that the expectation of x in the continuous case is defined by um, integrating over the range of x, okay? and it's x times the PDF, okay, with respect to x. So in this case, we have that the expectation of x is the integral between 1 and 0, those are our limits, and then it's going to be x times our PDF, which is ax squared plus bx, okay, with respect to dx. And we know this equals one half, as we're told that in the question. Okay, so again, we can solve the integral and then get another equation involving a and b from here. So just taking the integral, let's first expand that bracket. So we're going to get ax cubed plus bx squared with respect to dx equals one half. Okay, um, let's integrate. So we're just going to get a over 4x to the 4 plus b over 3x cubed evaluated between 1 and 0, okay, equals 1 half. And that's just going to give us that a over 4 plus b over 3 equals 1 half, okay? So that's our second equation. Okay, so now we just have two equations, two unknowns, and we can go ahead and solve a simultaneous equation to get both A and B. 
Okay, so I've just written out our two equations for us really clear, so we can just go ahead and solve. So what I'm going to do is just use the first equation to get an expression for b, and then just substitute that expression for b into the second equation to solve for a, and then just figure out what b is from there. Okay, so from the first equation, I know that um, b over 2 will just equal 1 minus a over 3, which means that b equals 2 minus 2 over 3a, okay? And then just substituting that expression, we have that a over 4 plus, and then b we know is 2 minus 2 thirds a, okay? Over 3 equals 1 half, okay? So here we can solve for a. So this means that a over 4 plus 2 thirds minus 2 ninths a equals 1 half, okay? And then 1 over 4 minus 2 over 9 is 1 over 36 a equals... And then 1 half minus 2 thirds is minus 1 over 6. Okay, therefore a equals minus 6. Okay, so now we have a. And since we know that b equals 2 minus 2 thirds a, that means that b equals 2 minus 2 thirds times minus 6, which is... 6. Okay? So therefore, b equals 6. So there's a and b, minus 6 and 6. And that's part a done. So moving on to part b. Okay, so in this part, we need to find the CDF of x. Okay, so we know from part a that um, a is minus 6 and b is 6. Okay, so what I can do first is just write out the PDF again with the values of a and b. So that means that f of x equals, and then just putting in a and b, we're going to have 6x minus 6x squared, okay, for x between 0 and 1, and then 0 otherwise. Okay, so let's use this to now find the CDF, okay? So, big F of X, okay? So all the CDF is, is just the probability that the random variable takes a value less or equal to X, okay? And generally speaking, the CDF can be found from the PDF through just integrating the PDF over the range of X. So in general, what you'd do is you'd integrate from x all the way back to the minimum value that x can take, okay? And of course, we're integrating the PDF, okay? And in general, we're going to use a dummy variable here inside the integral because we have an x in the upper limit, so it doesn't really make sense to also use x inside the integral as well. But of course, overall, the CDF is just a function of x. So when you actually solve the integral, and then substitute in x in the upper limit, then you're gonna just have a function of x, okay? So with that in mind, let's start to construct the CDF. So we have that the CDF, f of x, is equal to just the probability that the random variable takes values less than x, okay? And to construct this, we need to define this for all values of x, okay? So in our case, if we just look at our PDF again, okay, our range of x is from 0 to 1. So first we should start by defining the CDF for values of x that are less than our range. So in our case, values of x that are less than 0. Okay? And this is really easy. This is always just going to be 0 okay? because the probability that the random variable takes values less than zero is just zero. So that is always the same, okay? 
then of course we need to define the CDF with, within our range of x as well, so from 0 to 1. And this is where we need to integrate the PDF over that range, okay? But for now, we'll leave this blank. We'll do that in a second, okay? And we also need to define the CDF for values of x that are greater than our maximum value. So values of x that are greater than our range, okay? In this case, x greater than 1. Okay? And again, this is easy. This is always going to be 1. So now we just need to find the CDF for the range 0 to 1. And we will do that just by using that exact formula in red. So let's go and do that. So for x between 0 and 1, okay, the CDF is going to be defined by an integral, okay, and we're going to integrate from x to and the minimum value of x in our range, so the minimum value x can possibly take for this distribution is 0. So we have to make sure we integrate all the way back to 0. Okay, And the PDF in our case was 6x minus 6x squared. But remember with the CDF, when you're integrating, it makes more sense to use a dummy variable just to not get the x's confused. Okay, So I'll use u instead, so 6u minus 6u squared um, du. Okay. So this is a really easy integral, so let's just evaluate the limits. So evaluating between x and 0, and we're just going to get um, 3u squared minus 2u cubed, okay? And then just substituting in the limits, this is just going to be 3x squared minus 2x cubed, okay? So this is the CDF for the range 0 to 1. Okay, so going back up to our CDF, we can now just fill in that gap. So we know that for the range 0 to 1, our CDF is just going to be 3x squared minus 2x cubed. Okay, and that's a CDF done. So now we can just move on to part C. So for part C, we need to find the variance. So let's first define what the variance is. Okay. So the variance can be found by taking um, the expectation of x squared and then subtracting the expectation of x all squared. Okay, this is the most useful and common formula for the variance of x. Okay, so we already know in our question that um, the expectation of x equals one half. Okay, so this part we already have. We just need to work out the expectation of x squared. Okay, so generally speaking, the expectation of x squared is going to be the integral over your range of x, okay? And instead of being x times your PDF, it's going to just be x squared times your PDF, okay, with respect to dx. So in this case, um, we have that the expectation of x squared and our range of x is from 0 to 1, so our limit's going to be 1 and 0. And then it's x squared, and then our PDF was 6x minus 6x squared. Okay, and integrating with respect to x. Um, so let me just expand that. So we get 6x cubed minus 6x to the 4 with respect to x. Okay, let's integrate, so between 1 and 0, and we're going to have 6 over 4, x to the 4, minus 6 over 5, x to the 5, okay? And this is going to be 6 over 4, minus 6 over 5 which equals 3 temps, okay? So now we have everything we need to find the variance, so we can just substitute straight into the formula. Okay, so now we know that the expectation of x is 1 half, and the expectation of x squared is 3 temps, okay? This means that the variance of x, which we know is the expectation of x squared 
minus the expectation of x all squared. Okay, it's just going to be 3 over 10 minus 1 half all squared, which equals 1 over 20. Okay, and that completes the entire question. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.